buy this car. Let me just tell you why you're going to do it now. You're going to do it on all the payments we offer, and we're going to get you all the extras. And you're going to go home tonight, and when it drives tomorrow, it's going to break. And when it breaks, you're still going to have the payments still, but that's okay because I'll be driving my boat. Right? Nobody wants that. <laughs> that's pretty good, Dave. <laughs> right. Nobody wants that. I mean, that's, that's no, just insane. No one wants that. You know? But that's what people think. They go, oh, my gosh, somebody's going to persuade me. But in reality, we're, we're persuading each other every day, all day long. If we weren't, we would never have uh, a significant other. We would never get married. We would never have children. We would never have food on our table or jobs or anything else. Persuasion is a naturally occurring event. Learning how to persuade effectively simply helps you better understand how to control the events that are going on around you every single day in a way that benefits you best. Mm. Very neat. So you, you were talking a little bit about passion and its relationship to persuasion. But can someone be persuasive about something that they are not passionate about? Well, the answer is yes, but it, it sure sucks. I mean, you know, you can be persuasive about. So let, let's just let me let me put it this way: <clears throat> If your car breaks down in the middle of the road in the winter in Wyoming. And there's one tow truck company, and they want to charge you $1,500 to tow your car for a mile to get you out of the blizzard. They can probably persuade you to spend the money. You won't be happy about it. You won't like it, but you'll need it enough that you'll do it. <clears throat> so even if you're not passionate about something, you can certainly persuade people uh, if they have enough interest or need at the time. On the other hand, it just doesn't work long term. People who are not passionate about what they're doing, people who are not passionate about uh, persuading people to uh, to purchase the goods and services or interact in the ways that you want to interact, or even, and by the way, Chris, persuasion works with yourself. You're constantly persuading yourself all of the time. You know, if they're, if you're not passionate about that, it's just not going to work as well. It's not as much fun. It's not as effective. And nobody wants to be around someone who's uncommitted to what it is that they're trying to explain. It occurs to me that if someone's not passionate about what it is that they're they're persuading about, that... It, it it would seem to that it would be more likely that it would become manipulation. Do you think that that's true? Um, it, it could become manipulative if they're just let, let's just say that they have a heavy quota or something that they are in sales and they had a heavy quota right. attached to something. Then then it could become manipulative. But at the end of the day, what it becomes is just wildly ineffective because if you're not passionate about it, that comes through. If I tell you something like you know what, Chris, uh, let me you know. You can buy this thing or not. I mean, you know, these teleseminars are great. They're fine. You know, I mean, <laughs> I think people do okay if they listen to them. They might get smarter. Maybe they'll get something out of it. I don't know. You know, but yeah, hey, look, you know what? You should get on because, you know, you might learn something. <laughs> I mean, you know, you instantly get that maybe, possibly, I'm not committed to, to that idea. And if right. I'm not committed enough, why, you know, why would you buy anything from me? Why would you believe me? See, people who are passionate are believable. And what we're really trying to do are tell powerful stories that allow people to really become a part of the story. Do you want to become a part of that story that I just told? Of course you don't. You know, nobody wants to be drug into, you know, I mean, if you look, if you want to get depressed, I love the old, uh, you know, I, I love the old Charlie Brown cartoon where he says, you know, he says, look, you know, before I get depressed, I have to get into my depressed stance. And then he drops his head and shrugs his shoulders. And that's kind of the same thing. If you want, you know, if you want to persuade less, if you want to be less effective, then just get into your non-persuasive, non-passionate mode. And people will acknowledge you by not doing anything for you, with you, or in the future even want to be around you. So being passionate is imperative to effective persuasion, uh, but it's not imperative 100% of the time. I mean, look, even, even the best persuaders have bad days, but when you go through the process, when you go through the process of effectively persuading and you know what to do, you, here, here's what happens. It's just like a, you know, a baseball player, a football player, uh, somebody who plays an instrument, whatever it is. Even on a bad day, you can get into your rhythm quickly. And as soon as you start going through this process, once you've conditioned yourself to react to the stimulus that's around you all the time in an appropriate and persuasive manner, that's what happens even on the bad days. And so you still outpace, outexcel all of the people around you who are just moving through life, letting things kind of occur to them or happen to them without taking an active role in it. That makes sense. Now, in your book, uh, Persuasion, the Art of Getting More of What You Want, you talk about a word you mentioned briefly earlier, persona, and you describe it as the invisible persuader. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? What do you mean by persona, and why do you call it the invisible persuader? 
persona is the invisible persuader because it's what people see of us the moment that they interact with us. And persona is not limited to a human interaction. Persona also exists on your website, your brand of, you know, around your business. The experience people have the moment they walk through the door with you. See, what's happening all the time is that people are telling stories about us, about our business, about our, their interactions with us. And we can either actively take control of the story that they're going to tell, or we can just let them make up the stories. Now, if we're going to be effective in persuasion, we're going to help them tell better stories, and Persona does that. See, uh, Malcolm Gladwell wrote a great book called Blink, and he talks about this idea of thin slicing. And it's that people take these little pieces of information in at a time, and then they make decisions based on these little slices of information. The example he uses is art forgery detectors. Uh, these people walk into a room and they can detect w which paintings are forgeries and which ones are not, even though they may not be able to explain in minute detail why they know it instantly. They just know. They have that kind of gut feeling that, in fact, this is a forgery. But it's based on all of this thin slicing, based on all of the information that they have, that they've gathered in the past and their experiences. So all of these slices hit them at once. They make a decision. The same thing happens to us every day. If we see somebody who looks threatening or dangerous walking down the street, we move to the other side of the street. Or we do something different. We go another direction or lock our car or something. So we're constantly taking in this information and making decisions about it. Persona gives us the opportunity to create a persona that fully exposes who we are in relationship to who the person needs us to be in order to make a good and valid decision as it relates to doing business with us, buying from us, or even interacting with us on a, on a daily basis. Imagine if I wanted to get a date, Chris, and I decided, you know, I'm going to, uh, I'm, I'm going to go out and, and, and I'm going to wear my, uh, my knee boots that I just walked in from the farm with. Uh, they're going to be covered in manure and everything else. I'm going to have my uh, pants stuck in them. Uh, I'm going to have my holy uh, jeans on and, and, and my beat-up shirt and my tore-up straw hat. But I'm going to go down to the fanciest club in town because I want to meet me a fine woman.